Hi guys. Uh, last time we did, last time we dealt with uh, transformers, and uh, uh, I still, I, 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 we didn't cover a lot in that. There's a lot on transformers, guys, and this video is a continuation of uh, that video. We haven't talked about the protection in transformers. We haven't talked about uh, uh, the cooling in transformers. We haven't talked about the maintenance of transformers. We haven't talked about how to test for oil in trans uh, uh, water uh, in the transformer oil and so on. But uh, as time progresses, we're still going to deal with those. But I did, I think, in passing, mention that the simplest form of uh, a transformer protection is buckles relay, which is, of course, a gas uh, actuated uh, switch that consists of two mature switches, the upper one and the lower one, and then they are attached to the float and flaps. Uh, that's now the operation. And then as the oil passed to, from the main tank, to the conservator tank, uh, they, they touch, they, they activate their flaps and so on. And then uh, as transformer heats up, uh, there's more uh, gas because it evaporates. There's more gas that want to go to pass through the buckles relay and so on. And the other switch now will inform people in the surrounding maybe to sound the alarm, the other one will disconnect the transformer and so on. But we will we will discuss uh, uh, with those things uh, uh, and so on. But now let me continue again with the calculation of transformers. I'm going to take one last calculation on this. This is for N2 and N3 calculations. This is N2 and N3 calculations. As for N5, N6, Drop a comment because you've got a large scope, guys. I can't cover almost even. Just drop a comment and subscribe as well so that you can be notified when we do, when we do the next video and so on. Share the video. Share the information. That's how you will grow because the information you have, you may find that take you so understand it more better than you have it. So if you keep it to yourself, you are not growing. You are not growing. Uh, let's see. Let me start here. Oh, there is also maybe we, if we, in due, in future we're also going to discuss, say, transformers connected in parallel. There's a lot of stuff. There's the, the transformer got a large scope. Got a large scope. But for this, for this video and the previous ones, we are only restricted to N2 and N3. We haven't even touched uh, in details on its theory. Because I've seen normally people are good in in reading the theory and answer as it is in the in the book, but they struggle with calculations. So let me do the one last calculations. It says a seven a seven hundred and fifty kVA transformer. The 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 kVA is denoted by the symbol S. Is equal to 750 kilovolt amps and it's a three-phase transformer a 750 kva three-phase transformer has a delta connected primary it has a delta connected primary and a star connected secondary if the supply voltage, if the supply voltage, the voltage on the delta side, the supply, if the supply voltage is what? It's 11 kilovolts, 11,000 volts. Um, and the secondary voltage, the voltage on the star connected side, the secondary side, this is V1, V2, is equal to 380 volts. Calculate, calculate the following. 1, or A, rather, the primary 
the primary and secondary phase voltages. The primary and secondary phase voltages. Let's first write our four conditions. For, for star connected system, V line is equal to root 3 V phase, while I line is equal to I phase. For the star connected system, for the delta side, for delta side, V line is the same as the phase voltage. And of course, I line is equal to root 3 I phase, the phase voltage. And then and sometimes in the long run, because I've said this is a last scope, we'll also show you the connection that the connection of a three phase transformer it is actually the connection of three single phases but will do by means of drawing and so on uh, or to cover even that i'm gonna do this 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 problem in the same way but i'm gonna make my connection a little bit different um, the primary and secondary line voltage the delta in a delta connected system line voltage is equal to the phase voltage but you are given the line voltage meaning for delta for delta v line is equal to v phase v line is equal to 11 thousand 11 kilovolts and the question the answer the the reason there is given. Therefore, therefore, V line is equal to V phase is equal to 11,000 kilovolts. You don't have to write this. I'm only giving you reasons as to why you come to this. You can just you can just say V line is equal to V phase delta connected delta connected system, and then. Line voltage is equal to the phase voltage is equal to eleven kilovolts. That's the answer actually for A. For for A, this one, and then for two, the same A but Roman two. In a star connected system, V line is equal to root three V phase. You are given the line voltage as three hundred and eighty. 380 is equal to root 3 V phase. Let's do the phase voltage. That's what is needed. Let's do the phase voltage subject of the formula by dividing this by the square root 3. Therefore, therefore, the phase voltage is 380 divided by square root 3. And it's equal to what? It is equal to 380 divided by square root 3, isn't that 220? 380 divided by second function square root 3 is 219 volts. 219,39 volts. Those are the answers for A. Those are the answers for A. Now, now B, the B part says calculate the maximum allowable secondary phase current the maximum allowable phase current the maximum allowable phase current look we are given this we've got this we can calculate the phase current s is equal to root 3 V line, I line, 750 multiplied by 10 to the power 3, we convert it because we work, we work in volts, not in kilovolts. It's equal to root 3 multiplied by 380 volts. It's equal to the line current. Now, therefore, the line current is we want to make the line current subject of the formula. 
it's 750 10 to the 3 divide by square root 3 multiply by 380 and it's equal to what it's equal to 750 exponent 3 divide by open bracket second function square root 3 multiply by 380 and it's equal to what 11 39,507 amps. But this is the line current. This is the line current for the secondary part. But what happened? What happened in a star connected system? What happened? The line current is equal to the I phase. Therefore, I line is equal to I phase is equal to 11. 39,507 amps. Basically, that's what they want. Basically, that's what they want. Even if I can't see, I can't see what's going on. Yes, but that's what they want. Um, uh, the maximum power output, the maximum power output, the answer here they have said is 1140. They are right. They have just made uh, the whole number but the answer this is this is the exact answer but normally in engineering they like whole numbers so this is the, the take it from me 1139,507 is the same as 1140 right now they say calculate the maximum power output the reason why i chose this question guys i wanted you to see this the very same formulas that you know the very same formulas that you know. Say for instance, power is equal to root 3, line voltage, line current, multiplied by cos of theta. This, this, is this, is given, is there, we calculated it, is there, there it is, is there, this, is that, and is there. Power is equal to this multiplied by cos theta. And then this is given as 750. I'm not going to convert it because I'm going to give my answer in kilowatts. Multiply by, they say the output power at a power factor of 0 0.8. And it's equal to what? 750 multiplied by 0 0.8. And it's equal to 600 kilowatts. Straightforward. Straightforward, guys. But yeah, I think uh, this problem should be able to cover almost everything for N1, N2, N3 on transformers. On transformers. On transformers. But uh, while, while I'm told that I still got another... Uh, 10 minutes or so let me try and deal with uh, 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 some of the components of a transformer so that we know that uh, we've covered almost everything almost everything next time we'll only concentrate on calculations and so on and so on let's say for instance guys this is the main tank of a transformer and this main tank has coils in it hey, there are only three things in the transformer tank is the coils is the coils the oil and of course the core that keep these coils together and then they are isolated from each other so that there shouldn't be any short circuit. If there is a short circuit of some sort, ne, we call those faults inside the transformer tank the incipient, slow developing faults. They will be captured by what? By this Buchholz relay here, which is connected in the pipe between the conservator. This is the conservator. The main function, they might ask you that, and it's three marks. The main function of the conservator for the contraction and expansion of 
transformer oil with with regard to uh, or into temperature changes and so on. So that's the main 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 function. And then here, this thing is a gas actuated switch, and we call that a Buchholz relay. Initially, we explained that it has two main mercury switch: the upper one and the lower one. The lower one is responsible for switching of the transformer in the event of faults inside the transformer. Inside the transformer. The upper one, the upper one somewhere there, it is responsible for sounding an alarm in the event of a, 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 sev a severe uh, a transformer fault. Severe fault, normally severe fault is when uh, we've got a short circuit. That's the severe one because no one wants a short circuit in, in, in his uh, department. It, 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 it amounts to destructive features. It can amount uh, to the destruction of uh, electrical flow. Consumers might struggle and stuff and so on. So basically this is the function of this thing. That's its main operation. Its operation it has two main switches. The other one, it is at the lower, it is connected to the flap. And then as, as, the, as the transformer get overheat or overheated, they say more gas going up. The, 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 the transformer, they say, they say actually a, a, a gas which is lighter. So it climbs from the main tank, get into the main pipe. As it reaches there, more of it will actuate that flap. And then that flap, the mercury switch will, will operate, thus disconnecting the transformer. On the, on the upper one, it is connected to a flow. More gas, more gas again, the accumulation of more gas into that, um, uh, uh, to that flow, it will cause that float to operate and as it operates because the mercury switch is connected to it that mercury switch the upper one will sound an alarm that's the basic stuff the operation stuff the basic simple stuff stuff of a, a, a book called really and this one we, we, we already mentioned it is for the expansion and contraction of the oil owing to temperature changes and then we also got what is so called uh, uh, a visual glass here. Actually, we call it a silica gel. This is very, 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 very important. As you can, as you walk there, you see it. Uh, this this silica gel, actually, when it is dry, it's blue. And when it's wet, it turns pink. If it's pink, it's an indication that that transformer absorbs oil. Wait, 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 is it standing? So uh, there the, the should be a plan where we'll have to work on this prop here. We'll take, uh, we'll drain some oil and take it for testing and so on. And then sometimes you may find in practice uh, there are situations where you have to supply a load which is more than the size of the transformer. Then those transformers, let's say for instance, this is 750 kVA transformer. It will have to be connected in parallel with a transformer of this size to supply that particular load. And there are conditions, five, six conditions that should be met before those transformers are connected in parallel. We will discuss that later as we progress and so on. But yeah, I think basically this is what. And then we mentioned that this way, Serve, serves main two purpose, dual purpose, and so it conduct heat away from it conduct heat away from the main core and improves. Remember, there is insulation here that makes it like corrugated boards, also a uh, wood to ensure that uh, this coil doesn't touch this metal plate and so on. This way strengthen those insulation that insulation so that it should be more stronger and stronger and stronger. And that oil as well must have it must also have specific um, uh, qualities like the dielectric strength, flash uh, uh, the flash point and so on. And there's a lot you might even be asked to give 
uh, the eight characteristics of a transformer oil. It's not necessarily transformer oil, it's a synthetic oil. But in practice, we just say a transformer oil. We know what you are talking about and so on. Guys, I think this video is done. If you got another specific problem with regard to transformers, drop the comments there, share this video, criticize if you want to criticize, come to the table, let's look at this information, argue it so that we can grow, and then at least it's better if you do things with understanding than just uh, study, read through something, or cram. Cramming can only take you up to a certain point. Afterwards, then it's, you struggled. You will have to start from scratch again to prepare. So, please, guys, just an ad, it, this is a, just an advice. But you know how you study, consult. You know how to find me. Nice stuff. See you then.